a former Patriot, a two-time champion in New England, and current Cincinnati Bengal Ted Karras is with us. Good to see you guys. It's great always, to see you. Always good to it's, see you. It's buddy. great to see you. How you been? Been great. Yeah? You know, d- decent year for the Bengals, but, you know, didn't, ma- didn't make the show. And, uh, you know, get to see the Chiefs represent AFC again, so... Kind of rooting for the 49ers this well, that's week. That's good. Yeah, you never, never root for the AFC teams. Yeah. When you, when you get knocked out. Yeah. Not that you were knocked out, but you guys had some good quarterback play with Browning. Um, when you when you lose a guy like Burrow that early in the season, and you see the way the backup comes in now, I think your expectations sort of fly out the window. But you guys caught fire there for a while. What, no, what had made him so good. Had a shot. You know, Jake Browning. He's he earned the trust of his teammates. You know, well before that. Um, you know, even in the year previous, and he lived with me in camp for the couple of the last two seasons. lived uh, lived in my uh, in my house with me too. What did you do? So. Did you keep him in the basement? Like no, I kept him. Uh, put him in the <laughs> put him in the little auxiliary house out back. Nice. Yeah. You make him earn his keep, sweep the floors. You know. Oh yeah. No. Clean he's, the bathroom. He, he was, he's been a great teammate, and I think. <laughs> What did he do? What were the chores? What did he have to do? Take out the trash. He took out the trash. Yeah, mostly, the trash. yeah he took out the trash. Solid. Yeah. Solid. He got it. Yeah. But trash. really came in and, and, you know, showed who he is. I think that, that was so important for him to, you know, show that so he can, you know, hopefully have a 10, 15-year career now as a, you know, QB1 or QB2, but showed he can win football games. So very proud of him. Um, you played with Tom. You played with Joe Burrow. And we make the comparisons with Mahomes, and we know the track that Mahomes is on and all that, but... Burrow gets left out of the conversation because of the injury, and, you know, he didn't play this year. But what makes him special the way Tom was special? Did you see any similarities? Well, I think, you know, one of the first things I noticed when I got in the NFL is just how pure the ball comes out of the professional quarterback's hands. Tom was one of the you know, obviously the best I've ever seen. Joe's right there with him. But, you know, from a mental aspect, they're both killers. Um, You know, going out there every day, preparing to win and really, you know, destroy people. But it's it's been a lot of fun. I mean, I've been very, very lucky and blessed with QB play in my career, um, and it's interesting to get a perspective now of a superstar QB, who's more of like a peer, you know, 25, 26 year old, where Tom was was 40. So it's been a lot of fun to to navigate that with Joe. It's interesting to hear you say that about Burrow. Like, you know, he just wants to destroy people because every time I look at, I'm amazed how composed he is. He seems cool. He never seems flustered. And we've seen Tom like get in people's faces or yell. Do you ever see that side of Burrow where he's like flipping out on people? Or is that Joe's yelled him? at me before. Okay. Yeah, Joe's Joe Joe will get heated and yell when he needs to. I think you know Tom, you know took that to the next level. That was a big part of Tom's game. His his outward passion, where Joe is a little bit more composed. But you know I, I see a lot of similarities in them. There are different guys though in different eras, and you know I'm just very very fortunate that I get to play with with some of the best QBs around. How'd you get in there? Also, I, I, I'm amazed by this. How'd you go there and become a captain immediately? I mean, that, that means something to me. New franchise, and you've been a captain the last two years. You know, it means something to me, too. And I, I obviously, in the respect of my teammates, very grateful to them that they, you know, bestowed that title upon me, take it very seriously. But just being myself, bring a lot of energy and, and passion, enthusiasm every single day. I think that's, uh, you know, a big factor in success in football and any industry in general. But, um, you know, take it very seriously. We need to... Need to be here in New Orleans next year as a captain. Huh. Yeah. You were you were captain of Miami too. I was right? captain of Miami. Yeah. Man, got it going on. So, you know, very grateful for my teammates for voting for me. So, um, you know, hopefully, we do it again next year. You were a part of the Patriots in 2021, Matt Jones's rookie year, which was a good year, and you made it to the playoffs. When you look now at that team, and I'm sure you have friends there, and you've been just keeping an eye on it from a distance. Where where do you think it all went wrong? I don't think I'm going to point to one thing where it went wrong. That 2021 year was very fun. We had a lot of great guys that have, you know, been a part of the great Patriots teams. I think one thing that you're always going to miss is Dante Scarnecchia from a from an O-line perspective, from a run game, from an offensive scheme, and from just a culture standpoint. You know, Scar's the all-time best. I hope that he gets in the NFL Hall of Fame someday for all his accomplishments. I would not be in the league without him. So I think a lot of guys that were trained under him, you know, that makes a big difference. And that's the reason I'd be able to go into year nine now in the NFL. So you, you've been in other places. You had other line coaches. And we hear this over and over and over again about Dante and how good he is and how, as you just said, I wouldn't be in the league without him. Are there other good line coaches in this league? I mean, where, where are those guys? Who are the other great offensive line Give coaches? Give the next Dante, right? Right, where is that yeah. next Dante in this league? I don't think there's going to be a next Dante. I've had very good old line coaches uh, in, in other stops in my career. Frank Pollock in Cincinnati is great, too. But, you know, just coming out of college, 
you know, a late round draft pick. He really shot me straight with who I am and what I am in this league and what it takes to be successful and how I can make it. And there's really, he's very meticulous on everything. Everything was hand drawn, um, really spelled out, very, very language oriented. You had to speak his language when talking back to him. So, um, you know, I think, I don't think you're ever going to find another guy like Dante Skarniecki. I think that era of, of men probably has come and gone, but very thankful to him. Um, for you know, for all he did for me. I know you're very tight with David Andrews. You guys are good friends. Uh, King Phillip fans, by the way, they have season tickets. We've seen Ted oh, yeah. at some of the games. Uh, T.J. Parker's pub. He got his wings special this Sunday. You're gonna get back to rent them and get the wings. But <laughs> talking about David Andrews, there's there's the potential that he may not want to come back next year. I haven't talked to Dave, but it seemed like that was a narrative at the end of the year. We're not sure if David wants to keep this going. How hard do you think this past year? was on him, knowing him, and he never missed a game, never missed a snap, and uh, some of the stuff that he's fought back to get to the point where he is. He's, he's a great guy, great captain. Great captain, great friend and man. Um, learned the center position from being his backup for three years. Um, I, I think, obviously, this year was tough for everyone in Foxborough, you know, with the success that they've had for such a long time to, to not find that probably war on some guys but i think you know at the end of a tough season like that maybe things get emotional i fully expect dave to be back i do too yeah i mean just the kind of guy they need he him, is dude. they need him the but so guy, hasn't yeah. talked to him <laughs> yeah right <laughs> sure. the guy he I'm is not, i'm not okay. to just to, since he because he said i'm i know right. he told us too i said i'm going away i'm going to my farm but does he have a farm he's going to georgia, I'm not, georgia. yeah i think i think he has some some Trapper, property down so there he's going yeah. hunting yeah. Yeah. yeah he did go hunting he did kill that. something he had it on the front loader right? yeah, it was a deer yeah. yeah but i think you can get emotional right at the end of the season and that's something bill always said too is don't make any decisions till about early march if you want to come back or don't don't make any rash decisions at the end of the season so i think with who dave is as a player and as a man and as a patriot you know i think he's a first ballot red jacket guy oh so, yeah He's coming back. I, I I hope. You you just finished your eighth year, is it? Yeah, eighth year. Eight going year into nine, okay, yeah. so you're going into your ninth year. How much harder does it get after you've been in the league six, seven, eight? Now you're going into your ninth year because the work that goes into being ready for a season, it's it, you know, I, you don't just go home and sit on the couch in the you, off season. You don't. And I was the oldest guy in the Bengals this year um, at 30, so we had a pretty young team. Is that right? An oh. entire team? I, 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 we did sign AJ McCarron, so he kind of usurped count. the title from me. It'll but, count. Um, 30 years old is the oldest. 30 years old is the oldest That's on the team this year. Uh, you know, I feel very blessed that you know I came out with no injuries. Um, you know, that's a big factor going into the off season. But you know, I love it and can't wait to get going again. I feel like we had some unfinished business from this year. Kind of left a sour taste in my mouth. So ready to get back on the field. Obviously, going to take my time and enjoy enjoy Super Bowl Vegas. Um, but and. You know, take a refresh, get ready to go. You know, I got one more question before we get to the NFL, man, yeah. your stuff. Um, you're playing, your head coach is from the Shanahan McVay type tree, which is the new sexy thing in the league. What's different about your offense compared to the Ron Earhart offense that you played in when you were in New England with the 60, 70, 80 protection? What's your protection schemes like? Is it more simple or is it more complicated? I think it's more fluid. I think that in New England, we ran more sets out of 12, 13, yep. or heavier sets. So there were some protection nuances that were kind of rigid, where Zach and Brian Callahan, who's now the head coach in Tennessee, we just had a very fluid six. We have a very fluid six man protection that we can scheme up different players. We can take away best players or a certain scheme that, that defenses do. So I, I really appreciated that going to Cincinnati and being able to kind of call the shots at center uh, in a very fluid protection scheme. Easy, oh. easy uh, scheme to to pick up. Do you think for like a, especially like a you know, like a young quarterback or or an inexperienced offensive line? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah. especially at center, we're either going right or left, and uh, <laughs> but so it's one call and go with it. Uh, yeah, it's not. Yeah. But there there are nuances. But I think yeah. that you know in the Josh McDaniel system there were a lot more rules where this is kind of one or two rules per week, where in New England, it was an overarching set of rules that we all had to know. See, I'm asking because I'm scouting because uh, there was a guy in Cincinnati, pitcher. Was it Dan yeah, Pitcher? Yeah, Dan Pitcher. Who was uh, one, of the, one of the candidates. Yeah. Well, he was one of the candidates in New England, but then he goes back to uh, Cincinnati. Um, you know, what, what What can you tell us about him? And did we... Did we miss out on him in New England? Is that? I think you definitely missed out. I'm glad we didn't lose Dan. Um, he's he's a great guy. He worked extensively with Joe. They have an amazing relationship. Um, Cortland State guy who they just won the the national championship D3. But you know, a guy that's coming in with a lot of energy, a lot of passion, great knowledge of the game, 
and him and Zach have a great relationship. I'm really looking forward to the next step of our offense as we kind of mold into you know, our new personnel, coaching, and player-wise.